Hello and welcome to Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. I'm your host, Luke Howard. These organ concerts are streamed live every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time. Previous episodes of Piping Up are also available for on-demand viewing on the Tabernacle Choir's Facebook page and YouTube channel. And you can find out more information about this concert series at tabchoir.org slash piping up. Our organist today is Richard Elliott. He'll begin with David Shack's arrangement of the hymn tune, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones. This melody is based on the German hymn, Lasst uns erfreuen herzlich sehr, from 1623, and has been sung with many other hymn texts as well since that time. In the English hymnal of 1906, however, Rayforn Williams published it with the new words, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones, which happened to have been written by the chairman of the editorial board for that hymnal, Athelstan Riley. I'm sure there was no implicit pressure put on Vaughan Williams whatsoever to include his supervisor's hymn text in the hymnal. Most of the keyboard fugues composed by J.S. Bach were prefaced with something else, a prelude ordinarily, but sometimes a toccata or fantasia. And this was standard practice for Baroque composers in general, to think of musical sections in contrasting pairs, something more improvisatory, followed by a section that was much more structured. But Bach's fugue in G major, BWV 577, is just a fugue, a standalone work not paired with anything else. It actually seems to celebrate its independence. It's a lively, joyful dance, a jig, according to its nickname. After the Bach fugue, Richard will perform the second movement of Louis Vienne's Triptyque, a gentle, rocking, meditative movement titled Communion. The Triptyque was a set of three concert organ works completed in 1931, making it one of the last pieces written by Vienne before blindness and illness made composing too difficult for him. It was also one of the last pieces he played, minutes before collapsing and dying at the organ console of Notre Dame Cathedral on 2nd of June, 1937. We'll hear Bach's Jig Fugue first, followed by Vienne's Communion from Triptyque, Opus 58, Number 2.
Now we'll hear three hymn arrangements by today's organist, Richard Elliott, each representing a different tradition. He'll begin with his arrangement of Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above, a joyful melody that first appeared in 1566 as Mit Freudensart and became a well-known Lutheran chorale. The English words, Sing Praise to Him, are a 19th century translation by Francis Elizabeth Cox. And then we'll hear the Latter-day Saint hymn, Come, Come Ye Saints, a long-standing tradition at these concerts. And that will be followed by Richard's arrangement of Amazing Grace, a hymn so universally beloved that it literally needs no introduction.
Both the words and the melody of the ancient Christian hymn, Veni, Creator Spiritus, are at least a thousand years old. The Latin words are believed to have been written by the Archbishop of Mainz in the ninth century and have since been paraphrased and translated into many languages. The melody is one of the most familiar of Gregorian chants, developed during the ninth and 10th centuries. This is a joyful, optimistic hymn, inviting the Holy Spirit to guide our minds, teach us, give us strength, joy, and comfort, protect us, and bring us back into unity with the Father and Son. It continues to be sung by faith communities across the Christian world and at significant events, including the consecration of bishops, the ordination of priests, dedication of churches, the coronations of English monarchs, and so on. In fact, this hymn is appropriate for any time in which the need for a divine inspiring influence is openly acknowledged. And wouldn't that be all the time for every one of us? Followers of Christ are instructed to quench not the spirit and Veni Creator Spiritus is a hymn that for centuries has helped the faithful remember and strive to meet this aim. Not surprising then that so many composers have wanted to include its words and music in their own compositions. From Titelus, Bach, Berlioz and Mahler to Penderecki and Stockhausen, musicians have repeatedly over hundreds of years drawn on the strength of this hymn's powerful message and striking melody. In 1930, Maurice Dufle completed his three-part Prelude, Adagio, et choral varié sous le thème du Veni Creator, and it won first prize in a competition organized by Les Amis d'Org, a Parisian guild of organists. This prize announced Durifle's emergence as a composer of consequence, whose work was and would continue to be grounded firmly in his faith and his reverence for plain chant. Richard Elliott closes today's program now with the magnificent choral variations on the theme Veni Creator, by Maurice Durufle.
hope you enjoyed today's episode of Piping Up with Principal Tabernacle Organist Richard Elliott. Thank you for watching. You're always welcome to come back for the weekly live stream of these concerts and previous episodes are also available for on-demand viewing. Piping Up, Organ Concerts at Temple Square streams every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website, its Facebook page and YouTube channel, and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.